Hi, today I'm going to be covering the basic concept of FPNA and financial analysis. There are different departments in FPNA that do different things, such as finance business partnering, forecasting budgeting, financial analysis, and etc. But in this video, I'm going to cover the basic skill set that you need as a financial analyst, which is analyzing the financial results of the company. This is going to be a very simplified version, but it should give you a rough idea of what the work of a financial analyst should look like. And with that said, let's get started. The very first starting point of any financial analyst generally starts from the financial statements. What you see on the screen right now is a very simplified version of an income statement. This has the revenue, operating expenses, and then the EBITDA. A full blown out income statement may look something like this with revenue, cost of goods sold, operating expenses, items below EBITDA, and then net income. But this is pretty much just a very simplified version of it. The work of analyzing financials involves essentially evaluating the actual performance of the company against a different benchmark. Right now in this table, I'm comparing against the benchmark of the budget but this benchmark can be different depending on what you want to analyze against. For example, it can be a prior period, for example, prior year, prior month, prior quarter, etc. The most common form of benchmark is going to be the company budget, but you could also have external benchmarks as well, for example, industry KPIs and etc. In this video, we're going to keep it simple and go through a simple analysis of the actual performance of the company versus the budget. As mentioned, financial analysis generally begins from the financial statements, specifically the income statement. We have the actual financial performance for fiscal year 24, quarter 2, and we also have the budget for that period. We have the variance difference, the variance percentage, and then this is generally where we would provide commentary as to the material items that either outperformed or underperformed the benchmark, which is the budget. Right now, when we're looking at these variances, we can see that the revenues are pretty much in line with the budget, so no specific attention is needed here. However, when we take a look at the operating expenses, we can see specifically that licenses is significantly under the budget. So as a financial analyst, you would be responsible to explain why our license costs are so under. And if you think about it, as a CFO or a CEO, you would be interested to understand why our license cost is significantly under. So now that we have the variance, how do we actually go about analyzing these financials? Well, you would have to go into the underlying source data. In every financial system, the source data would look something like this. And essentially what the items presented here are just general bookkeeping entries consolidated into a database. So for example, if I were to filter this for license cost, and we can see that the total license cost captured for quarter two, which is 1185, matches the license cost reported here. So we know that this is the data that we have to analyze. And then from the budget perspective, we have, let's filter for license again. And if we look at the quarter two amounts, we have 1748, which is the 1748 presented here. So I know that the budgeted financials currently include these amounts, which factors in license cost for the division, brokerage operations general, and brokerage operations trading service. For brokerage operations trading service, the two vendors that we budgeted for include Lynx Trading Inc and Torstone Commissions. We've budgeted around 165k for both every month for these two vendors. However, when we go into the actuals and we wanted to only analyze quarter two, we can see that the license cost actually incurred includes Broadridge Solutions under Brokerage Operations General and Lynx Trading for brokerage operations trading service. What we realize here is that we don't see Torstone commissions and we budget it around 165K per month. And because of that, our variance is actually 563K favorable. So by analyzing the source data that makes up these financials, 
I was able to identify that the vendor that we budgeted for, which was Torres Known Commissions, didn't actually get realized within actuals. This could be due to several reasons, but essentially you would then go out and reach out to the department head of trading service to get commentary and understand why we haven't started any license contract with Torstone Commissions in quarter two. After getting that commentary, you could then begin specifying the qualitative reason as to why your license cost is under. So you can mention something like license service with Torstone Commissions have not yet started because of, and let's say that the department had mentioned that they originally wanted to start a license contract with Torstone Commissions for a new initiative, but they haven't been able to start that because of several reasons. So let's just say that have not yet started because of the delay in the trading platform enhancement initiative. So something like this. So when the CEO or the CFO is looking at this, they know exactly why our license cost is under because we have yet to start an initiative that was meant to enhance the performance of our trading platform. And this is really sort of what financial analysis looks like. It of course gets much more complicated as once you have this source data, you then have to dig into another source data and then another depending on how granular you want to get with the analysis. To end this video off with a last tip, the core skill set that will help you succeed as a financial analyst will include first, Excel proficiency will always help because 99% of your work will most likely be done in Excel. But most importantly, you need to be able to be fluent with financial information and be able to extract and generate insight as to why the company performed in a specific way. I hope this video overall helped you gain insight to what financial analysis might look like at a very simplified level. And if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out. I'm going to be uploading more educational content going forward, so follow for more.